Hey everybody, welcome to another excellent episode of the Panic Attacking Podcast, the podcast that looks at anxiety through a comedy lens. I'm Andrew Chavon. And I'm Stephen Rogers. This one is a fantastic episode. As you can see, we got new equipment and all new kind Everywhere. of setup. Yeah, it's pretty chaotic, <laughs> but this episode was super funny. I get into my Valentine's Day disaster yeah. in Manhattan, and we go through it in many detail, and it's pretty funny. And Dr. Deb, who is listening, gives us some great mental health advice when you try to manage your expectations in relation to somebody you're dating. Yes. Also, we get into a little bit of anxiety about state fairs. <laughs> 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 and uh, we get into topics such as uh, mental health between uh, teachers and students during the pandemic. And we also get into the anxiety of when you lose a relative or somebody close to you during the pandemic. Yes. And also the pressure from family uh, to stop working and to find uh, a partner. Yeah, so all that and more on this episode. Stay tuned. We got uh, the Patreon, five bucks a month, gets you bonus content. Yes. And we, we plug it more at the end of the episode. Panic Attacking Live is this Saturday with EJ Massey Campo and Carmen Lynch. So send us a DM to get the link to that or uh, check us out on Eventbrite. That'll be up there too. Thank you everyone for listening. Stay tuned for the music. See ya. Starts beating really fast. I'm like sweating and trembling. Me too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna die. Yeah. I'm gonna Hey everybody, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Stephen Rogers. I'm Andrew Chavon. I hope you enjoyed that theme music as always. Good to be here. Good to see you all. We have a the most complicated <laughs> studio setup in our lives and we are <laughs> able to put it all together in a, in a few minutes because we're on a strict deadline to get the heck out of here. <laughs> yeah, we, we really are putting our uh, podcast to the test because uh, we're going to freak out during this. Yeah, I think we'll be okay because I did the directions. We're exactly like 45 minutes away, and y your spot's not a, exactly a date, right? Just the show is? No, yeah. I mean, I feel like it's it's a New York show. It'll, it'll, it's like ours. It starts at least 20 minutes after it said it was going to. Yeah, so I think we'll be okay. My, my show, I think, is going to be the same way. So I can't believe we have a show, two different shows in the same area after having no shows for six months. This yeah. Is, go, go figure. And when we have a... Literally, we're going to get a picture of this from Steven's computer, but this is literally, uh, it looks like a forest of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Here, Here's what is in front of us. I've got a tripod with my phone on it, then a ring light tripod behind it. Then in front, I did three soda streams so we would have unlimited seltzer. <laughs> and then I have a ring light with your phone attached to it. And your phone is plugged into my computer so it can charge at the same time. <laughs> my computer is right there so we can talk to our lovely guest, Dr. Deb. That is plugged into an outlet across <laughs> the room. And then you're using a mic stand. And then you have a microphone plugged into an H6, which my mic is also plugged into. <laughs> and then we have a surge protector plugged into the wall. And every <laughs> slot on the surge protector is filled with equipment that we're using right now. And the windows are open. People are walking by thinking that... They're they looked into the uh, reality stone from, from <laughs> Thanos's fist. Well, honestly, we couldn't look more legit of a podcast. than. <laughs> I mean, this is pretty good. This is great. This is all done by the seat of our pants. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy this video because it's going to be worth it, I imagine. All of this was put together, by the way, knowing that you were coming over here and knowing how often I've set up a thing and you've corrected it. So I was like, <laughs> let's see. All right, let's do what he would have said in the first place. And then I did it with your thoughts of mine. How did I do? You nailed it, man. Oh, you're you're man. in my brain right now. So it's wow. all worked out. I'm Just, so excited. My only note is you have something green in your teeth right now. <laughs> so I, I hope you get that out. And you can see yourself in the camera. I don't know well, why. <laughs> Look oh. at that thing. That thing. It looks like the Jolly Green Giants nestled in the, your dentures. What? How did you not notice that thing? It's literally a whole piece of broccoli hanging out of your mouth. Well, I know it ain't broccoli. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I w well, I mean, what would you rather have me do? Look in the mirror or set up this perfectly so it can be <laughs> shot on video of how horrible my mouth looks? Well, it's all good. I, at least we got an opening joke. 
Yeah, we got an opening joke, but now I can't check it without looking into the thing that's going to well, be Well, it's still the there. You look, your thing looks like a clam oh, that's got God. algae on it. <laughs> it's hanging on like my comedy <laughs> career. <laughs> oh. Grab it on to dear life. Get that thing out of there. Get some uh, uh, weed killer or something. <laughs> Get some wa- raid mouthwash. Did you see it before we started? No, I just saw it now. Right. I, I mean, I don't know how I, I missed it. it. We got all it. right, thank you we so much. <laughs> thing had its own pull of gravity. It, the, all the equipment was headed toward that thing in your teeth. It started. I think. I think it was about to get its own social security number. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, so that's good because it does feel like we're on the deck of a spaceship, and that was the alien. So, <laughs> yeah. Never, now we, that I swallowed, it's going to pop out of my chest. <laughs> yeah. It's it laid eggs in your in your gullet. But so we got that out of the way. Good to see you, man. It's been a long time since we've been in in the same room. We we uh well, it's been two weeks, I guess. But yeah, it's been a it's been long enough. Yeah, and so we uh we we recorded Sunday, then had our Valentine's Day plan. So I thought we might check back in how those went. If they gave you anxiety, I mine oh mine did. Well, I, as I uh, mentioned before, I was alone on Valentine's oh, Day, yeah, that's right. so I just sad ordered Domino's pizza and ate it while my cat watched me. So I don't, I think I watched Better Call Saul and <laughs> it just became a glutton. <laughs> I mean, that sounds good to me. That sounds like a great time. But I, I tweeted about this. I, I'm pre-diabetic and my girlfriend was out of town. A horrible combo for Valentine's Day. I couldn't even get myself chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> so I ordered cheesy bread. Do they make diet chocolate, like f- sugar-free chocolate? I imagine. I can't be, imagine that it exists. I imagine it, if it did exist, it would be disgusting. But yeah, I think that's, uh, I don't know. I think that's just a cocoa bean. <laughs> <laughs> you just chew on that. I think it's whatever was in my tooth. <laughs> God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> So I want to fill you in on mine. Mine. So I told you the plans. Hotel in the city for a romantic evening. That's right. On on February fourteenth or whatever it is, Saint <laughs> Valentinian's Day. Yeah. In the old country, but <laughs> so we uh, the hotel I got was called the Millennium Hilton. It's downtown financial district, and if you don't know where that is, it's right next to the well the former. Uh, World Trade Center. I guess it's still the World Trade Center, but now it's the Freedom Tower. Yeah. And they have this thing down there called the Oculus, which looks like a um, undersea, uh, or um, what's that thing called with the spikes? Oh, the uh, amen- uh, amen- a- anemone? What is- oh, sea urchin. Sea urchin. Thank God it was not what I was trying to get to. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. The sea anemone meme. Mini me. The sea, Mini-me. The sea meme. <laughs> <laughs> See me later. <laughs> <laughs> See me on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pronounce that word either. A uh, sounds like a M M and and then I remember it, we're basically quoting Finding Nemo because and I remember that Dory couldn't say it or some some character couldn't say the word. Oh really? It was there a character that was a sea enemy? <laughs> no, I I mean they had a a lot of enemies in the movie, but uh, but there were sharks and maybe a whale. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> What's well, one of those movies I saw when it came out and never rewatched? Because I'm like, I think I know the plot. He uh, can't find his parents, and he <laughs> ends up in an aquarium. I bet you at the end they find him. <laughs> <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> yeah, the sequel wasn't called uh, "Still Looking for Nemo." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't have a lot of replay value because you're like, yeah, I know where this is going. He's, his dad finds him, and he get he runs in a different he runs in a SpongeBob and whatever <laughs> whatever else is under the sea. <laughs> uh, Sebastian from Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, this is a crossover of the century. Uh, it's uh, that flounder guy that doesn't look like a flounder because he's fat in uh, Little Mermaid. Yeah, yellow with blue stripes. Yeah, and it, a mohawk. I, if you're eating a flounder, it's flat and ugly. <laughs> this guy was uh, <laughs> plump, <laughs> plump and confused. <laughs> so, um, so we got the hotel downtown, which is. Uh, Oh yeah, so the the white thing is is just like a waste of space. Like it's just, it's just like a thing with spikes, and it's down there for some reason. And I think it looks hideous. The the uh, Oculus, it's called. Isn't that like that honeycomb thing? No, that's the the hive, which oh, is on the accurately named. Right, yeah, it's on the west side, but 
they closed it down because people have been committing suicide. Oh, my God. Three different people have jumped off the top of that thing. Jeez. This year. Like, at this pandemic, people are drawn to the hive like a honeybee that stung me when I tried to eat their honey. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe they'll end up putting netting or something. Maybe, yeah. A maybe, lot of places have that. Maybe they'll stop shooting that smoke, that beekeeper smoke or whatever. <laughs> they'll stop doing that around the hive so people don't fall off. Anyways, <coughs> that was a little inappropriate joke. <laughs> obviously... Well, it's a mental, those, it's a mental those, health podcast. We're concerned about these people, but yeah, I mean, please uh, call the the appropriate numbers if you're feeling that way. But uh, also, I mean, sometimes you gotta prepare for that might be a possibility if you're gonna make a tall thing with no <laughs> with no safety features. No safety features. Maybe put something up so people can't do that. I know it's a sad state of the world when you have to build things. In the contemplation that people want to destroy themselves on. Them. I I mean, uh, unfortunately, yeah, but uh, but that's what Domino's does. Enough of <laughs> <laughs> they make these. Yeah, things. that's why they threw a net over uh, my phone when I wanted to order a second pie. <laughs> that's why they threw a net over your gut so it wouldn't grow anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, before I continue, just uh, I I know I don't want to distract you anymore, but. I'm paranoid that this thing's going to stop recording my phone because I del- I spent all day deleting things. Hey, you're, you're doing great. Okay, great. All right. So just uh, keep looking over there. Yeah. But anyways. I'll be honest with you. I can make more eye contact with you through your phone than <laughs> straight ahead because the ring is covering one of your eyeballs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it and looks- my, and the, the, uh, the other eyeballs being blinded by the ring. So... This is like an exercise for my irises. It looks like you're uh, peeking through a stall crack, you know? <laughs> I can only see one eyeball and it's You look like a like a solar eclipse, like the, <laughs> the sun is about to pass through your your skull and then block out the sun. A lunar eclipse. I guess you're the the loon, but uh, anyway, so we get this hotel. I'm like this is the most romantic thing. The hotel was about Including the fees, which I didn't really understand. There was a fee for like uh, nonsense. Like there was something tacked on the <laughs> the boot fee or so. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> there's some weird fee in the, in New York hotels. What they, was it called? I can't remember. It's like literally like the oh, you know what it was? I just remember. It's called the Javits Center fee. The Javits Center fee. Yeah. What is that? I don't. I don't know. I, I have to look it up. You did you write in? Hey, we didn't stay at the Javits Center, so don't charge us for. Wait, I don't understand. What's the Javits Center? It's on the fee. It's on the receipt. I feel like I got the the true coat from a used car <laughs> dealer. You gotta get the Javits fee. Did to get the Javits? You protect yourself against the Javits. <laughs> true coat. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like William H Macy's at the front desk, like uh, wringing his neck. And I got we got we got rings. All right. <laughs> uh, I I guess I use that expression wrong. When you pull the collar, that's not wringing your neck. Wringing your neck is like when you kill somebody. I think. Wringing your neck is yeah. I'm gonna wring your neck. <laughs> oh yeah. What's the thing when you pull your collar out? Like you're nervous. I don't know. I think it's just pulling your collar. I'm not uh, sure. You're pulling my leg here, but <laughs> pull my finger. <laughs> Cut to the chase and cut to the cheese. Javits Center. Javits Center. <laughs> so I'll show you that. I'll post a picture of that receipt on the Instagram if you guys want to check it out. Panic Attacking Podcast on the Instagram. Anyway, so I'm so excited about this hotel. We drive down literally across the street from the, the Oculus, the, the sea urchin ugly thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm like, cool. It's in the heart of the action. It's not, you know, I, I'm still skeptical. I'm like, maybe we're going to be looking at a brick wall. So we check in right on check in, which is 4 p.m., and it's a, immediately a big line of schlubs, like <laughs> schlubby couples. Literally, it's like 50 schlubby couples in here. All and all the couples, girls of the couple had the most outrageous Valentine's swag or gifts. Like yeah, they all, yeah. They all had the stuffed animals that look like do you want them at a carnival, like the big ones, <laughs> the banana with the dreadlocks. <laughs> right. Yeah, they're all in the bag. 
<laughs> Giant Stewie. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you're good at that. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I'm sure that banana with the dreadlocks factory is hurting because of COVID. <laughs> oh, They're just gonna have mass bananas <laughs> with dreadlocks. Just a banana with dreadlocks overflow happening because the carnivals are closed. Uh, I mean, they're probably still open. I don't think those people are good with health, but. <laughs> They have a, literally machines. That you make mean you the the people that that have an entire <laughs> row of shacks that fry everything? <laughs> yeah, and machines that make you barf on on other people. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're, the, they're the pinnacle of good health <laughs> and, and uh, not spreading germs. The uh, New York State Fair, though, I would go there. It's in Syracuse. Oh, really? Yeah, and I would go there every year, and it was like a quarter for milk, and I remember. That being a huge deal. Because it was cheap or expensive? It was cheap. We would just line up. We would have the stack of quarters to get milk. Like in a glass or a jug? Uh, In a cup. It was like, because a... burned dairy is a, is local uh, dairy. <laughs> okay. Uh, B-Y-R-N-E. And uh, they had really good milk. And people would just line up, <laughs> give a quarter for milk. <laughs> Are you sure you didn't grow up in the Great Depression? <laughs> it's like a Great Depression event. <laughs> yeah, when people Wait. are complaining, I'm like, I was in the milk lines yeah. when I was a kid. <laughs> I, yeah, I grew up in communist Russia. We had to wait in line for milk, and then there was a separate line for bread. That was 30 cents. <laughs> 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 Wow, so it would just be an event. Your whole friends and family would go stand in the milk line. Yeah, and, yeah. Okay. And you get chocolate or, van- or, or van- regular. <laughs> I almost said vanilla milk. Ah, <laughs> uh, the original flavor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, our state fair, it was in Virginia. It was in Richmond, which I thought, state fair, it's going to be a blast, you know, like fun. and Right. And then you get there. It's literally just like big uh, animals. Yeah. They're all entered into the Blue Ribbon, like biggest animal contest. Yep, yeah, yeah. So there, it's all like... People, uh, pig poop, and you know, <laughs> yeah. It man, did they? There's no, there's never gonna be a a candle that's st- state fair scented. <laughs> yeah, really. It's, uh, yeah, what what's this candle? Pine? No, it's poop and carny. What <laughs> 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 what what's this? Uh, what's this edition called? Oh, the milk line. <laughs> yeah, this is the milk line board game. <laughs> You slowly move up, and it costs a quarter. <laughs> yeah, State Fair Monopoly. <laughs> yeah, the tilt a whirl. Yeah, those <laughs> that's the little figure. You got the tilt a whirl, the cow, the and fr- the freak shack or whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the bearded lady. What's it called? The, the corn on the cob. Oh, the freak show. Yeah, there was a freak show uh, when uh, at my State Fair. It was called the State Fair. <laughs> <laughs> It's so crazy when you picture New York, you picture Manhattan and buildings. You don't picture milk and uh, the carnies and. Well, I do. <laughs> it's ten minutes from my house. <laughs> uh, well, I always thought about that. I'm like, I wonder if any New York City people are coming five hours for the New York State Fair to see nothing. That's in New York City. Absolutely not. No one from Manhattan is going to the no. Syracuse State Fair. No. To. Uh, <laughs> Look at, okay. So first of all, I want to address the freak show because I went there when I was, I might have been like ten or eleven, and I thought like, wow, it's gonna be like just in the movies and stuff, the bearded lady, and, right? Uh, actually, I didn't really know what it was, but <laughs> I thought it'd be fun, you know? Yeah. Literally, just a guy who I felt bad for st- sticking needles in his neck and oh, and like pulling it. He was the, wringing his neck. <laughs> he was pinning his neck. He was like putting the needles in his neck and pulling out the skin. And I was like, good Lord. And then that was it. I think that was the only event. Maybe a guy like had one arm because he was in. Like, I would say that's freaky, though. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you weren't you weren't ripped off. And they just they shuttled everybody like uh, shoulder to shoulder. It was like a mosh pit of people like just. Oh, I got to be careful. It'd end up being a pin cushion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. Um uh, instead of throwing the guitar pick, he throws the bloody <laughs> pin that he's just stuck in his uh, face. Thank you. Good night. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> oh, sorry. Hey, you're pretty good at that. You want to join our show? <laughs> That's how they recruit. You're on next. <laughs> This guy's ain't half bad. Here, let's hang a state fair air freshener off that. <laughs> you first time taking a nail in the eye? <laughs> oh, there was a guy that put his nail nail in his nose, too. It might have been the same guy. I think the guy was just picking his nose. <laughs> Ew. Uh, and then I was like, good God. But this is like the vivid memory I remember is a uh, is a, another freak came out. This is like the salesman freak or mm-hmm. whatever. I mean, I, freak is such like a derogatory name, isn't it? For these, it people? sounds like we're being judgmental, but that was the billing of the show. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know we call ourselves comedians, but if there was a, a freak show, I guess we'd be like we're freak freak freakies. <laughs> Can you? Do you think uh, this is a inside baseball joke? But do you think uh, other uh, freak show uh, performers can show up to other freak shows? And get him for free going, no, I'm, I'm a freak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and then they go to the manager of the freak show. Hey, can I do five? I got this new, um, <laughs> I got this new uh, sticking a screw in my skull bit. <laughs> yeah, just hang out with the freaks in the back. <laughs> that, that freak, he performs for the freaks in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> That's more of a back, back of, of the, the tent. Room. Back of the tent freak. <laughs> He's a freak's freak. <laughs> and then the manager comes over. He's like, hey, good news. Uh, the freak that we had booked, it turned out <laughs> he couldn't swallow a sword. You're in. <laughs> Great. It's my big opportunity. <laughs> I, hope, I hope there's industry in the crowd. It's literally <laughs> more carnies. <laughs> the Ring Wing Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's Barnum and Bailey's out there. Oh my god! Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, oh, this guy came in, um, the salesman or whatever, and he had like this mouse that went up his arm, and he's like, and he and this he talked like he had like one of those surgeries that when you smoke too much. You know? Oh yeah, yeah, the box. Yeah, but he didn't have a box. That's the way he talked. He, oh wow! So maybe like, he was the original voice for it. Maybe <laughs> for the mouse or the show. <laughs> the box. <laughs> For the bo- oh the box oh yeah for the voice box <laughs> what so uh, here's your voiceover reel what do you we know you from you know that voice that sounds nothing like a human yeah that's, that's me. me that's me <laughs> <laughs> we want oh we thought you had one of those in <laughs> no that's me <laughs> that's me on the original voice <laughs> oh no oh the vo- the the ring light just went out oh I hit the button by mistake I think or maybe this ring light just. <laughs> Pooped away. I don't know. <laughs> it pooped. It pooped. Yeah. Uh. All right. Well, let me. Well, we'll we'll keep calm, calm down, everyone. Uh. Is that, I, is I, that the right uh, plug? It. This is the plug, but the the block that this ring light's attached to is like red hot. I think. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's gonna. Me- I don't know if you ordered this from. Pull the- it. Pull it out and. All right. Maybe it's got a. <laughs> oh God! I almost <laughs> knocked over the seltzer. That would be. Quite the disaster. So I got to do some MacGyvering here because I don't know. I got to literally follow the cord. This is really fun. I got to follow <laughs> yeah, the cord is... from the ring light to make sure I don't unplug anything else because we need literally everything. Okay. This is live anxiety. Feel this thing. Feel right. this block. Oh, my God. This is as hot as the riff we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Where did you get this? Chernobyl? <laughs> Uh, I got it at the the, the, the pallet center. Wow, the cha- pallet center. <laughs> oh, the chavlet center. The Damn it. <laughs> the chavlets. <laughs> um, I, I think I have. <laughs> I think I had that stuck in my tooth. <laughs> oh God, dude, this thing! I'm gonna get a burn on <laughs> Let me this. See it. This thing is glowing. I literally. I, really, I think you got sensitive fingers, or I have. Okay, feel fingers. the top where the thing plugs in. Not that the other one. The other side. No, 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 not the prongs. The other thing. Like the no. Okay. I've touched all f- sides of this thing. Maybe my hands have no feeling left. Okay. Well, give it back to me. I'll try to plug it back in. Um. So anyway, <laughs> you were holding it like it was a potato. I just took out of the microwave. Okay, it's working. <laughs> all right, we got light. Let there be light. Oh, wonderful. Okay, great. Okay, so I'm. I swear to God, everybody, I'm gonna get to the hotel story after. <laughs> After I get the sidetrack of the free show. This is good because I had nothing. <laughs> oh, great. Well, you got milk. <laughs> got milk? <laughs> <laughs> and I had something stuck in my teeth. <laughs> I can tell you that's all I've been thinking about since. You should put that thing that you got stuck in your teeth in a glass of milk and take it to the dentist. Yeah, charge people a quarter. 
<laughs> hey, I could be in the freak show. <laughs> All right, you heard of the bearded lady. You heard of the yak man. Now comes a uh, tooth <laughs> guy. Green tooth. Green tooth. The green tooth. The Green Lantern's uh, arch nemesis. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, so anyways, this like was an eye-opening experiment, or not a revelation for me when I was a kid, but the the freak show person had this mouse that went up and down his arm, and he's like, you see, it works like this, and he took out, he opened the mouse, and then there was this little black ball that rolled up his arm. Mm-hmm. It worked because it had this black ball in it, and it moves the mouse around. And we we're like, whoa, me and my brother and my friend who lived down the street, who we don't <laughs> talk to anymore, and his dad were like, all right, let's get that. That's cool. And I'm like, yeah, it has that black ball. Not looking back, why would a black ball move on its own? It was like literally the size of a speck. Like, <laughs> why would that move? It doesn't have a battery. Is it sorcery? It literally would be sorcery that would make it move. Is that the guy that tells how he does a trick, but he lies? <laughs> so That's what he did. He lied to us. That's a second trick. I guess the lying is the second layer of the carny, yeah. s- of the fake out or whatever. Because if he just had a mouse that moved up and down his arm, people would be like, no, that doesn't, probably doesn't work. Yeah. But if he had the ball that moved on its own, people are like, that makes sense. Yeah. Of course. It's the... <laughs> I see all the logic in there. Yeah. So then we got this thing, and then of course, it, all it was was a, literally a rubber mouse and a string, and you're supposed to tie the rubber mouse to your shirt button and then move your hands and make it look like the mouse was going over your hands, but you're just moving your hands, and the mouse is tied to your shirt. It's nothing like what the guy did. <laughs> it's literally nothing like the guy did. It's a piece of crap. It's a piece of crap. There's no black ball either. I took it apart looking for this black ball. <laughs> he he blackballed you. <laughs> I got the I got the shaft. Um, the jab it. <laughs> uh, You're at the hotel. Okay, so we get to the people. hotel. <laughs> oh, that's why we got it because everyone was holding the stuffed animals. Everyone was holding the stuffed animals. It made me look bad. <laughs> Everyone was holding the tackiest stuffed animals. Oh, and Maddie didn't have one. Yeah, but I don't think we cared about it, but it did. It made it look like everyone was there for Valentine's Day. And what made it worse is the hotel staff would, would go up and down the line and asking, are you are you from out of state for COVID purposes? Oh, yeah. And everyone was like, nope, 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 nope. Everyone was just from Queens. Everyone oh, like, yeah. like us. We, everyone just had the so same. So your whole neighborhood, you still were in the neighborhood. Yeah. <laughs> we're in this, the Astoria satellite location. Literally, and it looked, everyone looked so trashy, and immediately, like, the guy in front of us, his car gets declined. Oh, uh, boy. And then there's a guy arguing about something about his room, and the next, like, he's saying, like, I don't understand why you're kicking me out. And then they're saying, <laughs> well, we're kicking you out, sir, so uh, you owe us to your full thing. And he's like, I don't get that. <laughs> and then this guy's, like, so nice, saying, like, explaining why. Uh, you can't like keep horrible people in the hotel, I guess. <laughs> Literally, it's all happening around me, and I'm like, oh, God, well, maybe the room's nice. So we uh, get in the elevator. Only two people are allowed, but people are still jumping in on of the course. F- floors, you know. And we get to the room. We're on the 12th floor. Walk in the room. The windows are open. Beautiful view of the Oculus. Beautiful view of the Trade Center building, Freedom Tower. You can kind of see the river. Nice. But... <laughs> It smells awful. No, typical me. They got that state fair candle. <laughs> they got the state fair. They had multiple state. They had a state fair candelabra. <laughs> typical me. Everything's a disaster. It literally smells like like cigarettes, mildew, and there was a. Problem. I waited in line in the mildew line. Cost a quarter. <laughs> milk too. <line>. Milk too. <laughs> milk too. Oh, <laughs> I was gonna say I thought it smells like what's on your teeth, but <laughs> well, I swallowed it. So it's, <laughs> it's gonna end up being mildew. You're gonna have allergies. Um, <laughs> you're gonna have to sue yourself. They got black mold. Uh, black bald. Black bald mold. Uh, okay, so uh, so it <sighs> smell it smells like there's just been an orgy in there. <laughs> like it smells awful, and uh, 
Uh, but the view's great, and the room looks good. There's, couple, <laughs> there's actually a lot of stains in there, too. <laughs> well, it sounds like any view would be good after what you're described. Right. So it's like a trick of my senses. The view's great, the smell's bad, and, you know. Of course, every, oh, you know, if I had COVID, actually, it would be better. I wouldn't be able to smell. <laughs> maybe the guy, maybe everyone would stay there had COVID, and that didn't complain. So uh, in my head, so Valentine's Day is a Monday, and it's also President's Day. So in my head, I'm like, okay, parking regulations are going to be suspended in New York. Of it's course. It's going to be easy to park. They're not. It's They're only on major holidays. Oh, my God. So they're only suspended, I found out, on Christmas, 4th of July, and Memorial Day, and Labor Day, and that's it. Wow. And New Year's Day. Otherwise, the meters are running. The meters don't <laughs> care about Lincoln and, and Washington. They only care, they only care <laughs> about the Benjamins. <laughs> Killer. Killer. (laughs) (laughs) So um, we check in. She actually has to do a Valentine's Day show uh, in Midtown. So I'm like, okay, I'll move the car while you do that. And uh, so we leave and I drive in the car around. No spots. Nowhere to leave your car overnight in New York. So I'm by downtown, the, the edge of the bottom of Manhattan. I, I and I end up parking in the West Village after circling <laughs> concentric circles. Yeah, that's a one spot I can leave it overnight, and it's only because the, because of the snow, the the street cleaning's suspended, so right. I was able to park there. And I was like, okay, great. Now I got to take the subway back downtown. And as I'm taking the subway back, Maddie's texting me, "Uh, you we got to do something about that smell. I can't sleep there." <laughs> I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> Didn't tell me, didn't make it like, didn't turn it up this notch until uh, until I'm literally on the train back. Like, and on the train during the pandemic, it's so. Have you done it yet? Yeah, it's I, it's getting more crowded too. Yeah, luckily it wasn't that crowded, but there's people pulling down their masks to drink their coffee, and you know, like how anyone is is pulling down their mask once on the subway is beyond me because there's people that are pulling down their pants on the subway. <laughs> and no one has stopped going to the bathroom on these cars. Why are you not why are you keep not keeping your mask on? If they're not going to the bathroom in the in the cars, they're going in my hotel room. <laughs> That's what it smelled like. But the uh I know I'm wearing like three masks. I'm wearing like two like the 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 cloth one, yeah. a, a like disposable one, and like uh, the Guy Fieri mask or whatever that is from the <laughs> from that movie, V for Vendetta. Guy Fauci, <laughs> what's that guy's name? You said Guy Fieri. <laughs> then I said Fauci. What's his name? Guy, uh, uh, whatever. I don't know, but that's amazing. If there was a Guy Fieri mask vigilante. <laughs> Yeah, he's got a bomb Burger King or something. Yeah, and then he's got the bowling shirt with flames. <laughs> he starts like a call to people who who fire up their hair like him. <laughs> um, uh, so uh, yeah, you, you know he had a restaurant in Times Square. Speaking of where we're going tonight, yeah. I, and I was like, I'm gonna go one day, and then, I, and then it was closed. <laughs> I I really wanted to go. <laughs> it like immediately closed. It was open for like two months. Yeah. Um <clears throat> there's a flash in the pan. <laughs> yeah. There's a flash in the donkey sauce or whatever he has. <laughs> Does he have a donkey sauce? Yeah, he was like that's what was like his trademark sauce was at the restaurant. Was, and he picked donkey? <laughs> he did. He I swear to God. I, I can't remember a guy what's his name's, but donkey sauce, I'll never forget in my life. <laughs> Literally called donkey sauce. I, I was. I, I have no idea what it, it contains. It, but it intrigued me. Why <laughs> is it? Because it has a kick. It, what's the? <laughs> I think so. I yeah. think that's the pun there. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> uh, talking about a guy who, who looks like he looks in a, lives in a carnival. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, okay, so I get back to the room, and I uh, I have to pick up like the last minute chocolate and we got the cup i got <laughs> cupcakes from baked by melissa it was down. wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> last minute chocolate you didn't get anything before 
No, because I knew she had the show, <laughs> so I was like, I have plenty of time. What am I going to do, just sit in the room and stare at the wall? Yeah, I, no, that makes sense. It's not like it's uh, Valentine's Day <laughs> in New York City where there's uh, over <laughs> billions and billions of people. That's right. Well, not anymore. They're all in a retirement. That's true. They, are, <laughs> they left. At least everyone in a retirement home is no longer with us. But <laughs> Cuomo. The, um, no Cuomo. No Cuomo. <laughs> I tweeted that, but he, I, everyone's tweeted that. But the uh, his explanation for it is like, oh well, like he doesn't care. Like he admits to it. It's a big thing what he did. He lied about how many people died in there. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing I can say about that. All right, well, let's not let's not a political podcast. Yeah, um, this is a podcast about my hotel. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I uh, I go to bake by Melissa, which is like. I don't know how if they're a widespread chain. It's like a chain in New York. Have you ever been there? It's they make the microscopic cupcakes. What's it called? It's called Baked by Melissa. I've heard of it, but I haven't been in there. It's a literally so you buy like a case of of, of cupcakes that look like um, Easter eggs or something. Like mm-hmm. they're really small. They're like the size of a microchip, but they have like flavor. So you eat like a lot of different flavors of cupcake without eating a whole cupcake. Oh, nice. It's a great idea. So I got a bunch of those, and I got... Enough to be one pu- one cupcake. <laughs> yeah. I don't even think enough. I got like a dozen, and I, I, I really don't... I think you could make half of a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> so uh get those. I get some other chocolate and um, some other thing from a bakery, and I put it in a bag, and I, ch- I go to the check-in lady... And I have to wait in another line of schlubs with the, with the <laughs> banana dreadlocks and big uh, comical sized uh, heart box of chocolate. Yeah, you know, and right in front of me, the guy's carrying it like he's uh, at a at a sports game with the, the name of the the, the the player he likes. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Finally, get to the front desk, and I go, you know, it's very hard with anxiety to talk to people about. Things like that, but when right, you when, right. you, when you when you're between bothering that somebody who works there or bothering your girlfriend, you're gonna pick the stranger. <laughs> I, I I love everyone that listens to this podcast, uh, but there's very few people I'll pick over my girlfriend on who to. <laughs> It's always the other person over the girlfriend if you have to annoy someone. Yeah, because and plus always. we live with ours. Yeah, so. we live with them, and yeah. So the stakes are high. Oh, I don't, yeah. I don't know the front desk people. And the way I get around the anxiety of having to complain is I get in the line, and by the time I'm in front of the line, they call you over. So that's like the icebreaker. They call you over, and then and then you're in the zone. You know, you could be like, oh, my room smells. <laughs> you know, they already called you Sounds up. Sounds like you're in the zone. Yeah. <laughs> the quarantine zone. <laughs> Stinky zone. So I go, uh, and plus it's like, they have the glass divider for Corona, so I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. I have to yell through the glass. Oh, you're masked. And I'm masked. They're masked. They're masked. The glass is in the way, so I go, <laughs> my room smells, I can't hear it, bro. And they're like, huh? <laughs> you have to do charades. <laughs> I have to hold my nose. My <laughs> room stinky <laughs> put my fingers over my nostrils <laughs> my room smells it just looks like you're tightening your mask <laughs> <laughs> they're like sir i can't help you with your mask that's your own thing <laughs> 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 yeah so i finally i'm like my room th- i finally get them to say i i finally asked like my room smells con- is there a possibility possibility i can get another one and they go let me check they disappear they come back and then they say something I can't hear. They're like, I'm like, what was that? <laughs> I felt like an old man. <laughs> By the way, so, quick uh, tangent. My the thing that makes me laugh the most is when someone goes, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what? After someone says something very queer and distinct, huh? <laughs> uh, it is great. That is a great. <laughs> comical moment <laughs> and sometimes you do it and it gets me so <laughs> huh uh, what was that <laughs> so uh, yeah so she explains i I, uh, I mean this you know condensed version but she explains that there's no rooms available it's booked up with all the schlubs that i saw in the lobby uh, schlub hub <laughs> schlub hub <laughs> <laughs> schlubs in 20 minutes or less Get your money back <laughs> uh <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> so the the, uh, the she says, what we can do is send somebody up. They're going to assess the smell. I feel like this is the, the episode in Seinfeld with the car that smells. <laughs> He's like, hey, <laughs> my room smells like a cess. <laughs> A cesspool. <laughs> thank you, thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> a cesshole. <laughs> uh, is it? Is things still recording? Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, uh, so I go. So they're like, and I'm like, then what happens? They're like, well, then we decide if it needs a quick clean or a more detailed, deep, <laughs> deep smeller. <laughs> That takes two hours. And I'm like, two hours? I just moved my car and went <laughs> cupcake shopping. <laughs> I should have done this earlier. Yeah, I'll just plug these in my nose. <laughs> yeah, it's plug in the room. It's plug in my nose and sit on the bed. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's option three is to get the black ball I was in the mouse and put it into your <laughs> nasal cavity. Um, so uh, they, I'm like, okay, great. So they don't, I'm like, so... How am I going to find out what's going to be there? And I can't hear her. I don't know. So I'm like, I'm, I'm just going to go up to the room. Is that okay? I'll talk to the smell expert. And they're like, and she's like, okay. So I go up to the room. And it still smells. It's supposed to be worse at this point. <laughs> oh, man. You're in the seventh circle of smell. <laughs> I'm on a highway to smell. <laughs> you smelt it. They smell the pay. <laughs> so, uh. I'm like sitting in there. I'm like just literally sitting because I'm like oh, I'm afraid to go to the bathroom. The smell guy might walk in. <laughs> you know, <laughs> want to offend the smell guy? Yeah, he's like, it's you. Yeah, <laughs> it's clearly whatever you ate earlier. So, uh, like, I'm just sitting there, and then I'm literally just sitting there because I, I <laughs> I'm afraid to do anything. I'm afraid to literally <laughs> turn on the TV. I'm literally just sitting. I, I, and I'm afraid to sit on the chair because it's like the whole room <laughs> smells. I don't know what's the chair. So oh, I, you think you're gonna smell? I, I don't know what's going on. So I, I basically just stand in the middle of the room looking at my phone. It's the only thing I could do. And about like maybe 15 minutes go by, and the door opens, and this like little guy scuttles in with the mask, and he's holding like a sprayer, and he he looks like it, he he looks like one of the little orcs from Lord of the Rings that want to mm. eat the hobbits. Yeah. You, I know you haven't seen it, but there's two kinds of orcs in Lord of the Rings. There's the little one with the weird nose, and then there's big ones. But he's looked like one of these little ones. He just scuttles in, crawling on the walls. And I go, <laughs> he just starts spraying. He doesn't even talk to me. He just starts spraying. And I'm like, are you the smell expert, sir? <laughs> like, who are you? And he's and, I, and then he's spraying around, and I go, oh, excuse me. Uh, I put on my mask. I forgot to like wear that the whole time. I put it on. I'm like, excuse me, sir. Um, there were. I was told there was a woman who assessed the smell. He's like, and he goes, huh? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> he literally goes, what are you talking about? <laughs> I go like, well, there might be a bigger smell that needs the machine. He's like, what are you saying? <laughs> smell machine <laughs> like, sir, I don't think that technology that's a nose <laughs> yeah <laughs> smell machine what is this my bathroom <laughs> so I call my toilet no the um <laughs> I'm like <laughs> but he has already he's like I want me to get somebody he's he speaks another language I'm like well now it smells like your spray I, I, I kind of like <laughs> lose it a, a little bit I'm like, it's okay. It smells like your spray, so I don't know. The smell expert is, is <laughs> tainted now, so I'll just wait outside. He's like, okay, and then I leave. I remember I I, I didn't take my key out, <laughs> so I got to hover around the door. I hear him spraying around and doing things, <laughs> and literally the door opens. He scuttles out like a like a, a maniac, and I have to like put my hand in the door so oh. it doesn't close. It closes my hand. <laughs> He doesn't even ask if the smell's okay. He just scuttles away, probably oh, to the man. next room that smelled. Or, I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's like uh, drew a pentagram on the ground. He had to appear in it. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I get in. It smells okay, and then um, it smells a little bit better. And then Maddie finally gets home, and it, she's like, "It still smells weird, but it's not as bad." And we're like, "Great!" But I'm like, "You weren't. You left a long time, so you don't know how bad it smelled." I'm like, "This <laughs> smells way better." There's always a thing where, <laughs> and it's it's not uh, just uh, girlfriends, but uh, every time 
one of the when people are in a couple and one person's gone the whole time you're through chaos and then they come <laughs> back and judge w- how much progress you've made like you know what i mean like there there's a huge problem and you make it down to a small problem <laughs> and they're like hey they come and they go there's a small problem but it was big while you were gone i'm like you had no idea what was <laughs> what it was like i was in the trenches here <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> Fighting the battle of smell in our field. <laughs> this was my, <laughs> it was my own personal smell. <laughs> uh, man, well, we, we smell, have... smell on earth. <laughs> so it was okay after that. We already we um, uh, yeah. Every every restaurant downtown was filled, so we ended up getting pizza. Oh, and I, I want to just tell this real quick because was it is, Domino's? No, it was Joe's. Oh, okay, but. I was like, let's get a pizza and it'll be a heart shape. That'll be fun, you know. Mm. And that's that'll make it less trashy to eat pizza, right? So uh, we get to the counter and immediately I'm like, uh, I feel like so nervous to ask for the heart shape. Yeah, it feels, it's a little. Like, it's weird. It's weird. It's like, not weird to do it, but it is a weird thing to leave your mouth. Yeah, right. And I feel like such a tool. Like I right. feel like I'm bothering them. Right. Asking for the heart shape, but I'm like, I told her I'd do it. So I go, I hear the words coming out of my mouth, and I can't believe it. Go, oh, man. Can you make it into a heart, please? And the guy goes, yeah. And then uh, he leaves, and I and I kind of like have like a meltdown where I'm like, I can't believe I asked that. Everyone heard me. And Maddie's like, it really doesn't matter. You're never going to see these people again. Oh, you were saying it out loud? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, man, I feel horrible. I feel so embarrassed. And it's so hot in there because of the pizza oven. I'm like, trigger my anxiety. Uh, So, uh the um i uh the pizza oh right so finally <laughs> i'm like freaking out about having to ask him i feel so bad i feel so embarrassed and the yeah. pizza finally gets out we open it it's a circle <laughs> <laughs> he didn't do it <laughs> he's like it's pac-man's heart <laughs> yeah heart is relative okay <laughs> it was <laughs> what it looks like a real heart like the one in your um chest i should have been more specific <laughs> the candy heart look so we got a lot of uh things We'll, we'll, we'll uh, introduce Dr. Deb real quick. Uh, our uh, our therapist, our resident therapist of the podcast with over 30 years of experience. Uh, and uh, yeah, just someone that we love to have on the show who listens and uh, gives us feedback on your topics and ours. Welcome, Dr. Deb. Well, hi, guys. Happy after Valentine's Day. <laughs> Same to you. Thanks so much, Dr. Deb. You heard all that. What's your initial thoughts here? Uh, <laughs> you know, I just want to say it's, um, you know, you guys are doing a, a, a service to, to the community by talking about your anxieties. Because it's really interesting, isn't it, how torturous anxiety is. Oh, yeah. All that thinking in your head in preparation to ask for a request or to point out something that shouldn't be there, like a smelly hotel room. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, it, it's, it's torture. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, what, what can you, any advice you can give to people who uh, are nervous about asking for things? Yeah. Well, it's interesting that uh, both of you said, if you're asking for someone you love, like uh, your, your girlfriend, Uh, then you can do it. Um, But the question is, uh, why can't you do it for yourself, right? Why why are you less important than somebody else? That's a great question. And if I wasn't dating her, I would sleep in the smelly hotel room. Yeah, same here. (laughs) If I was alone, I'd probably just contribute to the smell and then leave. I'd get some swimmers nose plugs and, (laughs) and a sleep mask. Well, I just wonder because often anxiety is, it, it comes out of the blue, like we talked about yeah, before, uh, but sometimes in our lived experience, there is there are experiences that trigger uh, anxiety. Um, so uh, if, we, if we were to think about it, maybe a teacher that scolded us or a friend that embarrassed us. So sometimes when we say we can do it for somebody else, we're actually doing it out of fear of their rejection 
or fear of disappointing them. We don't want uh, our loved one to judge us or to be disappointed in us. So that kind of drives that bold uh, behavior. So it's really a self-protective um, mechanism. Yeah. That's what, right. what do you think about that? I think you're right. I think so too. Uh, I've, it's so much easier to do it for other people, but uh, I think it, it's a good point of practicing for doing it for yourself. And this sounds, this is, uh... I don't know if how on topic this is, but I saw uh, this philosopher's video on TikTok actually, and he said anxiety is the most common uh, thing you can do because it's the thing you feel before you make a choice. So mm. if you make any choice in your life, which you do, you can even choose not to make a choice, then you're experiencing anxiety at that moment, and then the levels of anxiety are just how well your mental faculties are to handle that. What yeah, do you think about that, Dr. Deb? <clears throat> that's interesting. But what I was going to suggest is to kind of uh, train your cognitive set, your, your thinking set um, to practice. I want to do this for another person to feel joy and to feel my love, right? Rather than to do it so that you don't want to disappoint them or you don't want to experience their anger or rejection, you want to use that thought, I want to do this to show love so that that person can feel how much I care about them. And, and as you do that and practice that, you may be, it, it may become easier for you to do that for yourself. Like, I want to do this to help myself feel good. I want, I want to show love for myself because I, I deserve this for myself. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a revelation I never really thought of. <laughs> I never thought about <laughs> doing things for myself. Honestly, I don't know. Uh, I, I think just thinking those words that resonate, right, with Valentine's Day, I love you. I'm showing my love for you. Just practice doing that for, for your loved one. Because, uh, in relationships, we do get quite anxious about pleasing the other and, and not disappointing the other person. That's right. True. Yeah. And, and so if our motivation is to show love and generate the joy that we feel in this relationship, it, it just puts another perspective on it. That's true. Yeah. The, uh, okay, great. I mean, thanks so much, Dr. Deb. That was great insight. We just got to get into some listener topics because we're running a little tight, if that's okay. So we want to get your take on some of these. Uh, well, first of all, we have to get into Ronnie wrote in um, and she sent us a Valentine's Day gift basket or, and stuff. And there was candy and Valentine's and cute stuff in there. And I forgot to bring it, <laughs> but I ate all my candy and Maddie ate hers, but... You still have some candy. I've been hiding it for Maddie. I've been <laughs> oh, under thank my bed. God. Um, so you got your candy coming to you. But Ronnie wrote in. She lost uh, somebody that she knew from COVID and oh. was having trouble um, handling that. Uh, any advice for her, Doctor Deb? Well, yeah. I mean, have, experiencing a loss is uh, genuinely sad, and uh, you know she's going to grieve, but. If we think about COVID <clears throat> and the pandemic, we're so we're all vulnerable, right? So it threatens our own sense of uh, vulnerability and uh, makes us more fearful. And it can also make us feel angry. And she had uh, said before, if I'm not mistaken, about people in her business, people not wearing masks and, and not paying attention to personal space. And, and so that, that can resonate for her, those past experiences, and she can feel angry that people aren't being more cognizant and thoughtful and protective of others. I, I feel that, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah well, we're and, sorry, and anger we're sorry does for complicate uh, the grief. So what she could do is to, uh, you know, write down uh, those kinds of thoughts. I, I'm angry because I'm sad because I wish I could um, to start journaling uh, some of those thoughts. 
Yeah. Yeah. That's true. You get them out there. Stop ruminating on them. If you write them down, that kind of frees you from your mind a little bit. Yeah, but also when, when we're faced with loss, we can't really specify our emotion, right? It just feels like one big blob, like anxiety feels a lot of times. It's one big blob and you're kind of stuck and you're kind of immobilized. So identifying the specific feelings uh, can really help. Because then you deal with one feeling at a time or different, you have different ways of dealing with all those different feelings. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So we got two more. And, and I'm sorry, uh, Ronnie. Yeah. Yeah. Thoughts. Condolences, Ronnie. Many apologies, Ronnie. Or uh, yeah, condolences. Okay, so we got this next one from Amelia Pereja. She sent me phonetically because I guess she wrote in before. It might have been the last episode, and I, I said I, we butchered her name, and plus I called her Amanda. So her name <laughs> is Amelia. I was way off. You didn't even get to the last name. <laughs> well, I think I butchered that too. Yeah. <laughs> but So Amelia Pereja uh, wrote in that this is a juicy one. She her parents told her that she spends too much time at her job and needs to go to work on getting a man and getting married. Oh, wow. Uh, so I guess she's single. Her parents are telling her that she works too much or even works at all. They're mad about that. And, you know, they telling her to get out there and get a man. Uh, I don't know if that's ever happened to you, Steven, but <laughs> well, I, I'm a workaholic. So I, I know that uh, it, it is good to balance and, not just focus on one thing, but I'll let Dr. Deb uh, tackle it. Well, I, I think that can be a cultural thing uh, with parents uh, thinking that their daughter needs to be married. It's um, uh, might be difficult for Amelia because that's kind of a culture clash with the uh, culture of the old days, or this is how we always did it. And, and right. not, not understanding the independence and the drive for success that a woman can have, right? Yeah, so a woman is not supposed to be doing that. She's supposed to be finding a man. And can she be finding a man if she's always at work? And what a man wants, quote, unquote, is a woman that's going to take care of him and do those uh, nurturing things at home. Um, so she probably is in a traditional uh, family uh, with old fashioned beliefs and that's really hard uh, for her. Also, if she's listening to the podcast, <clears throat> she may have anxiety and we do generate anxiety as uh, perfectionists. Many people with anxiety are also perfectionists. So she indeed may have trouble leaving work uh, because she has to get in there and be there and do everything right and, and achieve more than the average person and do things well. So it's difficult uh, to leave. And we uh, perfectionists, we had this false belief that the more hours we spend at work, uh, the more productive we are. And that isn't always true actually it can you know be just the opposite that if we set hours to nurture ourselves outside of work we're more productive when we do go to work yeah absolutely so steven yes do we have time for one more or no uh well we'll be uh dry we'll have a story for next week either way so let's do <laughs> one more okay so we have uh, two good ones, but we'll, we can only get to one. And this person wrote in before the other person, so we're going to get to hers. But just a shout out to a guy named Mari, or, or a girl named Mari, for, who is nervous about the Brazilian government, uh, how it sucks. Uh, figure that's too much into detail to get in before our time's up. But we'll get in this well, one yeah. later. Anyone that we didn't get to, you will be taken care of next week. Yeah, so here she. We're sorry, but thanks for listening because they said they listen. And we'll get into this one, though. Tawny Teacher. Or no, this one's from Tawny. She said, teachers' expectations and students' mental health during the pandemic. So I guess she's worried that her students are losing their minds. <laughs> <I guess laughs> they're in their house all the time, which I understand completely. Or she could be a student 
um, thinking that why do the teachers expect the same kinds of uh, performance when we're all suffering here? Oh, that's probably it. Yeah. That makes more sense. Um, yeah, because, uh, you know, students are, are wary of going out and, and uh, being in social environments, and they're also tired. And like Ronnie uh, experience, uh, many people have acquaintances that have COVID. Um, so, uh, yeah, the teachers do have the same expectation. Yeah, I know. And plus, their teachers are bored, too, I assume. I don't think... And they have to be mindful that the students are keeping social distance and keeping their masks on. Right. Um, so that also is really stressful. And it's so hard to be with people in masks and not being able to see their expressions or what they're experiencing. Yeah, the eyes are doing a lot of heavy lifting lately. Yeah, and my eyelids. Yeah. Or maybe... <laughs> yeah, you need two masks. <laughs> uh, they might be on Zoom, too. Right, uh, which is extremely fatiguing. Oh, yeah, so students who are on Zoom and the teachers are teaching and the teachers don't know that they sound like uh, the order at McDonald's, you know, the... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're, you're a teacher, Dr. Deb. Yeah, and they and they, you fade in and out, and the students are trying to pay attention, and it's just so hard to pay attention on Zoom. And then they might have children in the background, or spouses coming in and out, or boyfriends, girlfriends coming in and out, the extended families at home. So it's like a chaos to to be a learner at home on Zoom. Absolutely. So we feel that. I mean, any advice to uh, handle it? I'm sure it's like, some. I, I, from if this is a student writing in, I'm sure they're like, "Hey, the world's collapsing. Why do you expect me to hand in this history book right. homework?" Yeah, well, uh, that expectation is not going to change. But perhaps they could suggest like a, a warm up uh, when class starts. The teacher get in touch with how the students are doing where the student can ask, can we just have a little discussion? Uh, Good luck with that. <laughs> feelings and our experience. Uh, that could help to have a, a weekly or daily class warm up or something to put closure on it. Um, the, the other thing that the student can do is, is what, uh, I, I take it she's a kind of a young adult student or an adult student to set up a private space um, that would be just like if she went to school. It doesn't have to be a big space, but some kind of private space, even if it's like cleaned out a little area in a closet where she could close the door and, and not feel uh, intruded on or intrusive to the family and just have that private learning space. I like it. Yeah, that's great. All right, well, we got to wrap it up, Dr. Deb. Dr. Deb, thanks so much for listening to our anxiety. Thank you, Dr. Deb. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. I will. Uh, yeah, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Okay. See. Bye, Dr. Deb. Bye. All right, everyone. That's been our episode. It's been a great time. I, I write in what you think about the new uh, video. Thing yeah, we're doing. tell us how we look. Except yeah. for the teeth thing. I yeah. get it. <laughs> so it's going to be on YouTube. Panic Attacking, I think, is the YouTube. Uh, Panic Attacking Podcast. Just search that on YouTube and you'll find us. Yeah. So we're uh, working on the, the video. And, uh, well, hopefully this all turns out really well. Beggar Amazing, we got him back on board. Yeah. So I, I am excited to work with him. And uh, p the, p the Patreon. Five bucks a month. Five bucks a month gets you extra episode. It gets you the video of the bonus extra episode. The vo video of this. This releases early on the Patreon by like, I don't know, six hours. Or something. <laughs> it's always early though. It's always early on there. Um, and uh, it's pretty cool. And you get some other cool things. So join. We got some new joiners. Shout out to, uh, who was the guy? that joined? John Chappell. John Chappell who joined. Shout out to you, man. And and uh, check us out on the uh, well. Stay tuned for the plugs. We'll get all the plugs <laughs> out of this on the outro. Perfect. See you, man. See you later. It's
starts beating really fast. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the episode. Really appreciate all the support. If you like the podcast, please share it. Uh, tell all your friends. Give us a high rating. Like, subscribe, all that jazz. And uh, we're on social media. I'm uh, at not Steve Rogers on uh, Instagram and Twitter. Stephen Rogers Comedy on Facebook and StephenRogersComedy.com. And I am on uh, Twitter, A Chavone, S C H I A V O N E. Uh, and on Instagram, I'm Andrew Chavone, same spelling as before. On uh, Facebook, I'm Andrew. Chavone. And my website is AndrewChavone.com. Perfect. Thanks for listening and see you next week, guys. See you next week. Okay.